Hello and welcome to another tutorial by me, Hamster Hill. Um, this one's going to be um, um, how to make a character move in Blender. Um, it's going to be the first of many tutorials, and I'm going to do a series on how to make sort of like a um, uh, what do you call it, an adventure sort of puzzle game thing. Um, hopefully, you'll learn a lot about the game engine throughout these tutorials, and um, if you have any suggestions for parts of these tutorials, feel free to send me a PM or chuck it on the um, comments at the end. Uh, so yeah, we'll get straight into it then. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to move our cube up, um, just so that it's not sitting on that sort of that flat plane. Um, make sure you're in side view so that the uh, blue line is facing up when you do that, because um. Otherwise, um, gravity is not going to work well for you at all. Um, now what you need to do is go down here into logic, and you want to change it from static in here to rigid body. Now, um, if yours looks a little different down there, that's because you don't have the same version as me of Blender. I have uh, 2.48, so um, that's the latest one when I made this. Um, so, if you don't have that, get it. Um, I'm sure the next couple versions will be sort of the same, but maybe not. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to add four of these sensors, four of these controllers, and four of these actuators. Now what you can do to make this bigger, because it's really hard to do um, to see everything, is you can press control up, and you can also, to navigate around this, you can hold middle mouse button and move it around. So um, those are quite handy little things for when you do it. Just make sure that when you press control up again to minimize it, that you move it back down, because otherwise you'll go back into other menus and they'll be up there and you'll be like, well, where the hell are the menus? What what, what happened? Um, so yeah, so anyways, we'll get back into this. Um, now, basically, um, this works like coding, um, so but simpler. Um, so what you do is sensors are the things that sort of bring in the information and um, if the information is correct so say for example uh, if we use keyboards so if this key is being pressed there's also a whole heap of other things you can change in here to make it so that if the key is not pressed and all that kind of stuff so if say for example the key W is pressed then it sends a message to say that it's correct to the controller now what the controller does is it sorts between all the messages it's getting from the sensors so say for example we had another one such as a touch sensor and you put that with that um, because this is an AND controller it'll sense okay well we've got one but we might not have the other one so we're not going to do anything but if it gets both of them then it'll send the message to our actuator then the actuator does something and um, what the actuator does in this case motion is it'll move the object around. Um, there's a whole heap of different ones in here like camera and IPO and sound. Um, those are the basic ones we're probably going to be using later on. And um, so yeah, you can have more than one actuator connected up to the same controller. Same thing as you can have more than one uh, sensor connected up to one controller. I'm not sure if you can have more than one controller connected up to... Uh, you can, I'm not sure what use that would have. Probably if you have more than one way to get an actuator going so say you want to move forward you could either use W or press up then you'd put that in there as well um, so yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to make all four of these keyboard sensors and um, we're going to use WASD to move line around so you want W S is backwards A is left D is right um, then if you go in here, that's the name of the sensor. You might want to just name it the same thing as what it is, just for ease of use. Uh, then you can click on here and click this little orange thing on the side, and that'll minimize them, just making it sort of look a little nicer. Um, you want to also connect them up to each to their own um, controller, like so. And you can minimize those as well. There's not really much point, though, because they don't get much smaller. Um, and then connect all of these up to different actuators. So, um, just to do that whole 
lining thing you have to make sure you click on the little ball and you drag a line out and drop it into the little socket thing and you can also drag it backwards as well but that yeah um now we need to set up our motion actuators um the basics of these are fairly simple um the there's sort of three basic different methods of moving in here um the first one is a location and rotation and that doesn't take into account physics and um, all that kind of stuff. It basically, it's just sort of like um, location actually sets your location, actually moves you forward no matter what. Well, if, if there's a wall there, it'll stop. But um, it doesn't take into account sort of mass and stuff. So, like, if you're pushing stuff, it won't go slower. It'll go the same speed. Um, rotation's the same sort of thing. It'll rotate. Um, unless there's a wall there, like a completely solid thing, but if there's like little things there that are say moving things, it'll hit them out of the way. Um, with force and torque, that actually takes into account mass. So it'll um, for force, if you run into an object that has mass and is moving, you know, and stuff like that, it'll calculate. Okay, well, I'm heavier than that, and I'm going faster than it, so I'll take it with me. But it sort of slows it down a bit and stuff. And um, torque is the same sort of thing as like a rotation, a rotation, but it's a rotation where if it hits something, it'll you know maybe bounce back and rotate, or um, might not be able to rotate because it can't push the other thing, all that kind of stuff. Um, the lin v and angle v, um, I'm not really sure what they do. I haven't used those. Um, I believe still again that line v is probably um, the moving one, and angle v is probably the rotational one, but I'm not really sure what those are. Um, some of these are sort of a little odd because they don't work with gravity very well and um, so you want to make sure you sort of pick the right one um, so yeah so we're going to be using uh, force and rotation and um, before we get into anything else these notice how there's three sort of zeros on each of the rows and that signifies um, the different axis of the object, right? And so the first one's X, and the second one's Y, and the third one's Z. Now, um, if this little L on the side, which means local, if it's that darker color, that means it's ticked. Like, so the transformation will be local, which basically means it'll do it across the object's axis. So if you have an object, and you're making it rotate to face a different direction, and then you have, um, say, force, for example, going across its x-axis. If that's ticked, it'll go across the object's x-axis that's just been rotated, so it'll go in that direction. But if you have it not ticked, then it'll go um, in the global x direction, so it'll go across the global x-axis. Um, I hope that's sort of clear. Um, so yeah, so we can now that we've got all that sorted, we can use them. Uh, so our first thing is W which is forward so to do that we're gonna have force and um, we'll have a force of say 5 just for testing purposes um, then of course that's on the x-axis um, we'll have another force here for backwards because the next key is S so we'll have negative 5 because that'll go in backwards um, you also notice that I kept these ticked because I want it to be on a local force uh, then for our next one, which is our rotate left, we're going to go up here to rotation. We're going to do it across the Z axis, which is the last one. And we're going to do something like uh, 0.03, because from experience I know that that's really, really touchy, that one. Uh, we're going to turn off lo uh, local, and we're going to do a negative 0.03 for that one too. And turn off local again. So now if we were to add a plane for our floor... Lay on top view, space, add, mesh, plane. You want to scale that up just so you have room to play around with. And you want to select our cube and then just press P to play. And it'll move. Now, of course, it's not moving right because we forgot to do something, which is if we go in here and click bound, and that'll make it move like a box instead of like a sphere, which is the default thing. So press P to play and just drive around. As you can see, he's moving. Woot. Um, so that's about it for this tutorial. 